new revelations in the horrifying case of Tim Piazza, the student who died after an alleged hazing ritual at a Penn State fraternity house. Today in court, prosecutors released stunning text messages the frat brothers allegedly sent to one another as Piazza lay dying. ABC's Gio Benitez was right there in the courtroom. It was a dramatic day in the courtroom as 16 former Penn State fraternity members appeared for a preliminary hearing related to the death of their pledged 19 year old Tim Piazza and prosecutors released a new round of what they say are damning text messages. There were text message after text message shown in this courtroom today, all of which collectively demonstrate a callous disregard for one human being and a senseless need to try to uh, preserve their own uh, situations. These messages, which could prove key to the case, were allegedly exchanged between brothers of the now defunct chapter of Beta Theta Pi as Piazza lay dying in a hospital bed. One reads, he looked expletive dead. Another, I think we are expletive, like beyond expletive. I think after this, we could be kicked off. It's over. And I don't want to go to jail for this. Hazing is a huge thing. A defense attorney saying these messages don't incriminate the defendants. None of them had the intention, of course, to harm Timothy Piazza, and they're trying to figure it out. But prosecutors say some of the text messages show an attempt at a cover-up. One brother allegedly urging another to delete a group message that included Piazza so there would be no evidence on Tim's phone. Another writing, make sure the pledges keep quiet about last night and this situation. Tim Piazza would be alive today had uh, there have been just simple humanity exercise. These uh, fraternity uh, guys thought that by erasing text messages or erasing their searches uh, on their internet browser that they would prevent law enforcement from finding that information. But the reality is once a text message is sent, once an internet search is conducted, that information uh, can't just disappear. So what they were essentially doing was creating a paper trail that now is being used against them as evidence to show consciousness of guilt. These messages adding to the pile of evidence the prosecution has already collected as they try to piece together what happened inside that fraternity house where they say a hazing ritual took a twist for the tragic. On the night of February 2nd, prosecutors say Piazza and 13 other Beta Theta Pi pledges participated in a drinking challenge called the Gauntlet, consuming four to five drinks in just two minutes. They bring the pledges and make them drink copious amounts of alcohol really Quickly. Piazza then reportedly suffering a catastrophic fall down a flight of stairs. Cordell Davis, a fraternity brother who was at the event that night, says he tried to get Piazza the help he needed. I kind of like lost it. I was like, I was screaming and yelling. I was saying we need to take him to a hospital. We should call an ambulance dial 911. But a grand jury report says no one immediately called 911. Instead, surveillance video captured nearly eight hours of distress. An injured Piazza trying to get up, repeatedly falling over again. Four men seen dragging his limp body upstairs, trying to rouse him by slapping his face and pouring water over him. This was the worst possible debauchery and depravity that you could possibly have. Instead of dialing 911, the report says the brothers were using their phones to search for the phrases falling asleep after head injury and a few minutes later, binge drinking, alcohol, bruising or discoloration, cold feet and cold hands. 12 hours after Piazza's fall, the first call for help. What's going on today? Uh, we have, one, we have a, a friend who is unconscious. She hasn't moved. He's, he's cold extremity. It's probably in the ambulance. When his family saw him in the intensive care unit, they say he was almost unrecognizable. They spoke to my colleague, Dan Harris. He was all covered up with warming blankets. You were trying to find a spot of skin to touch. The nurse brought me forward and told me to kiss him goodbye. It was hard. And that's what you think of when you close your eyes. It looked like he got hit by a car. He was in bad shape. He was on full life support. His eyes were half open. He wasn't there. The nurse brought me in a room to see them and and they, they broke it to me that he wasn't going to wake up ever. Piazza died from his injuries the next day. Medical experts estimate that his blood alcohol content at the time of the fall was a 0.4.
What was it like for the parents to sit there and hear all of these details, hear those text messages be read out loud? In Jim Piazza's words, there wasn't a moment today that I couldn't stop thinking about my son, Tim. It is excruciatingly difficult for the Piazzas to sit and to listen to the callous and reckless misconduct of individuals who cost their son his life. Of course, it's a tragedy, but you know, that doesn't mean there was any intent involved in any of this. Tonight, as many continue to ask how this could have happened, the defense is pointing to Penn State, noting that two security guards hired by the university called social checkers were at the event mere minutes before Piazza's fall. The company that provides the guards, St. Moritz Security, declining to comment. What does this do to that case that you have these two security guards hired by Penn State going into that fraternity house just nine minutes before Tim Piazza falls down the stairs? Well, look, what we understand is these security guards are trained. They know what they're looking for. And if they don't see a problem, how is, for example, 19-year-old Michael Bonatucci, who's a college freshman, supposed to see a problem when trained professionals don't see a problem? The university now telling ABC News they're implementing new safety and reform initiatives, which include looking at monitoring, spot checks, and and adjudication of violations. The university permanently banning Beta Theta Pi, stating hazing and dangerous drinking are not permitted. But Piazza's family questioning why more wasn't done earlier. The argument from the university is underage drinking has been a difficult problem to solve for many, many years, especially fraternities because they're private property and not the property of the university. I think that's a cop out. They should have no underage drinking whatsoever. They should have bouncers and bartenders at, at any fraternity function where there's alcohol being served. We should definitely expect Penn State to be hit with a, a major civil lawsuit. Colleges have to look at their policies in terms of uh, you know, how much are they doing and are they doing enough to prevent drinking on college campuses? A total of 18 young men face charges in Piazza's death, eight charged with felonies, and the hearing will move into its third day tomorrow. But Piazza's family is seeking more than justice. They say their ultimate goal is making sure no one else suffers like their son and that another family doesn't have to endure the loss they did. We have to be the advocates of change. Tim is not just our son anymore. He represents every son and daughter of every family that, that has uh, someone that they want to send to college that may want to participate in Greek life. For Nightline, I'm Gio Benitez in Belfont, Pennsylvania.